Good morning, Facebook family and YouTube subscribers. Um, I said I was going to do a video where I would discuss uh, my experience, experiences in the early 90s, 1991, 1990, 1991, when I served time in a maximum security prison. Um, I'm going to share a little bit of it because we'd be here all day discussing this mess. Uh, but this was a, as part of my life that I kind of had kind of tucked away. Um, it was an experience that it's, it's hard to explain. But you all, so let me give you the perspective. I was a little kid. I was 19 years of age, um, 19, 20 years of age when all this took place. I had served some time in the county jail before being sentenced and shipped to a maximum security prison in Macon, Georgia. Of course, I'd never been in trouble in before in my entire life. i uh, never even been on probation. So here was my first time getting in trouble. They sent my black ass to jail. Uh, and, and, I, and now I understand the reasons behind that because they had, Georgia had opened up all these new prison system, systems, prisons, and they needed inmates. So if you got in trouble, you was going to jail. You were going to prison because they needed to fill up this bad space that they needed. So we all know how that plays out today because we, we see judges being sentenced and um, probation officers being getting in trouble for filling these prisons with prisoners who really shouldn't be there. I should not have been in that prison. Um, I, mean, I was too young, A, B, first time offender, C, non-violent offender, not even drug related. But I was there. But this goes back to, I think, that God works in ways that we may not understand. I needed to be there. I needed to see what was going on in that prison. Um, because it would have an effect on my life later on. It also would help my decision process as to things that I did in my life, things that I would never do. There are certain things I'm never, ever, 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 ever going to do to end up behind them damn bars. I met a lot of guys. There were a lot of now. Let's, in that early, in the late in the early nineties, there were a lot of guys serving time at that prison for violent charges. I was at a maximum security prison, so when a lot of drug offenders, you had a lot of guys who had murdered, assaulted, um, rape, child molestation. These people were in there serving some serious time for serious problems. With that being said, the guys that were there. But they'll serve their time and go home. Those that were going home. Some of those people had life sentences, several life sentences. But this was a camp, um, max, all those a maximum security prison. It was a facility where the average inmate had worked hard to get to that prison because the facility was very nice. It was just new. Um, Matter of fact, it was an old college campus. You figure that out. They took an old college campus and turned that shit into a prison. So, it was, for me, arriving there, uh, a scary place at first. You know, I'm young, I'm black, I'm gay. It's obvious, you can tell. I was a little skinny. I was a little kid, skin and bones. And to see the way the inmates, the male inmates and guards aggressively came at me in such a like, mm, who are you and what are you in here for? And, you know, when I first I arrived there, I, be I became very good friends with a guard. And he would pull me out of the cell block every day or the dormitories. And we would just talk and chill and laugh. And he I would sit in the um, little officer's area with him every day. And, um, I, you know, I'm young. I was 19, 20 years of age. This man was probably a little bit older than me. But I come to understand that he was gay. And this was his first exposure to an out gay person. Um, and he wanted, he had all these questions. He, he'd be making laughing jokes and stuff about it. But I began to realize that this man was asking me these questions and stuff because he wanted to understand my life. Because he knew this was also his life. When you're in a, in, in a jail environment, a prison environment, the inmates and the officers are all serving time together. 
I mean, because they're right there every day, 10 to 12 hours a day, unless they're off from work. They just get to go home. We got to spend the night, but they'll be right back in the morning when their shift is going on. So, I cannot, I don't want to say it was one of the worst experiences of my life because I've been through some stuff that I think was much worse. I think, I think I needed to go through that experience because it would frame my life and it would help me to know what would happen if you do bad things, hurt, harm, drink, drinking and driving, shooting, killing. If you do certain things to certain people, there was a guy in there who had killed his wife, very attractive guy. I mean, this man was, he was a dentist. I never forget it because I met him. Um, we were, became very good friends, and he finally told me one day we walk around. We would walk around the yard. There was a big track there, and we walk around the track. And he told me what happened, um, how he supposedly accidentally killed his wife, choked her to death, and he had children. Very attractive guy, and he even had a picture of her that he carried in his wallet. And we had wallets in prison, but you had no money in there, so. I became really, really, really close friends with him. And um, when I, uh, let me go back a little bit. When I first arrived at the prison camp, um, you come through intake. And you now keep in mind, I was a little kid. So you come through intake. When I came through intake, um, the, the inmates running the intake selection, they decide where you're going to be what room dormitories you're going to go to, what bed you're going to go to, wherever your living quarters are going to be. And the two guys that are running it, attractive guys, one was, I'll never get Murphy. And he looked at me, he said, you come into my dormitory. You, you mine. And I was thinking, hmm? He was like, you don't talk to nobody. You come into my dormitory. I'm going to put you in there when you come through did the little intake thing. Because so, they put you in this lockdown for a couple of days until they uh, to talk to the counselors and you know, they would make sure you ain't going to, you know, they just want to see mentally where you are before they place you where you need to be in the camp. And then also, they call it almost like a mini diagnostic. So anyway, I ended up in Murphy's dormitory. Now, Murphy did not like the guy he used to do all his walking with because, um, I don't know, I guess Murphy was extremely jealous. But me and the guy became really good friends. Murphy didn't like this guy. Murphy despised this guy. Murphy didn't want me talking to him. That's a whole nother story. Murphy was insane. But Murphy was attracted. All these guys were, I can honestly say then, most of the guys that I was locked up with, those were, they were some fine brothers. You know, and there was a lot of sex going on at that prison camp. A lot of sex. There were condoms, Lou, and them guys was in there. I, I grew with I grew, guys that I would, would think were friends, just friends, they were actually, they were fucking. I'm a little kid though, so I don't know what's going on. I'm, I don't, there were some, now there were some drag queens there. Outwardly gay, um, well, you know, transgender, transgender, ginger, all right, well, transgender, whew, my tongue is acting up today. So, you had some of them in there, and they were running that damn camp, too. But they were really nice. They, um, I had a nice time with them, hanging out with them. And they would educate me on certain stuff that was going on. Who was fucking who? They knew. And I was like, oh, okay. But um, I spent a great most of my time hanging with the guards because they were intrigued by me. Because I was not this guy. I was out, I was gay, but I was not a person who was very, um, like the transgender, transgender individuals who were there, transvestites, gay, whatever you want to call them, drag queens, whatever. And so they were intrigued by me because I wanted to work out, go to the gym, they had sports, I was participating in stuff. And so they had never really seen a gay guy out gay guy like me. Now, they knew mess was going on in that prison camp. They knew these guys was fighting. They knew when these individuals, these two guys would get into a fight and they knew why they was fighting because they was fucking and something had happened and so, hey, love of fighting was quite common in prisons. 
And that's how you would find out what was going on because these individuals would start fighting over who knows what. The same old bullshit people find on, on the streets. But I spent a lot of time with the, with the guards, with the prisoners, I mean, the, with the guards, and I'm going to talk about that in another video because I found that to be very interesting because occasionally I've heard some over the years about guards getting in trouble for having sex with inmates, and I know why that takes place. Some of those guards literally fall in love with these inmates. You're in a close environment, and you see somebody every day, and you're sharing this person's life with you, I mean, the guard that I literally spent my whole day with, he would get there around 7, and he would leave at 7. And I wasn't working at that time, so, you know, you have a little job in prison. So I would literally spend, I have to count, from about 7.30, go get breakfast, come back, and I would spend my whole day with this man. And we would just sit and talk and laugh and have fun. And, of course, Murphy was at work because he worked in the kitchen. So, he, so I would be with this guard all day. And there were some things that I began to notice about that guard that uh, when I look back on it, that he was starting to get um, very possessive with my time. And I'd have to sit there and entertain him because he, the man was literally not liking me. I mean, I don't know what other word to use. I'm going to do another video about that. My, I, my thoughts on that because it's, we're all human beings. And we have to understand, even if you're in a prison, a guard is still just another human being. It means we all have hearts, we all have desires, we all have feelings. If you're attracted to somebody, you're attracted to somebody. I don't care where you are in life, whether you're a guard attracted to an inmate. It happens. But anyway, so I said I was going to do a small video because I talk about this mess all day long. Because you know, I've got some stories to tell, and this is just going to be a little short video, because I'm about to cook breakfast, it's already 9 o'clock. But anyway, this was just an introductory video to my experience as a black gay man in a maximum security prison. This was in the early 90s, the prison system has completely changed since that time, they're a lot more violent now because you've got a lot more younger people. The prison system, the age has come down on these inmates. And so you're looking at a lot of kids, 17, 18, 19, 20 years of age, carrying life sentences, if not longer. So they, if they, some of them guys may never get out of prison. So the, the prison environment has changed, gotten very violent, very dangerous. And they will kill you in these prisons today. Not so likely 20 years ago because people were serving their time, going home. It was a different environment, older inmates. You didn't have all those drug problems that you have today. But that's just my perspective. You know, hey. Anyway, I'm out of here. I'm going to finish make my little protein shake today. I am doing strawberries, bananas, oatmeal, egg whites, and blending it up and drinking it and heading to the gym. Mm, sounds delicious, huh? It is. Anyway, you guys have a great day. If you like my videos, please click like. Give me some feedback. And I'm going to do some more videos about my experiences in prison. I have to, today I kind of was kind of all over the map. So I'm, 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 I'm going to go into some greater detail about some of the stuff that took place when I was there. And I got some stories to tell. Ooh, Lord, do I have some stories. But anyway, you guys have a great day. I'm out of here.